Welcome to this video on RxJS and specifically on observables, observers and subscriptions. What are all these things? How do they work together? Well, like that. We have our observable, which basically is a wrapper around some data source. And data source typically means a stream of values, because as you might be aware, observables are a concept we typically use for asynchronous data. Though it's not limited to this, that's important too. You can also wrap it about any synchronous data source. We will see this in this video too. So we have that stream of data, possibly asynchronous, so possible multiple values over time. And now we want to do something whenever a new value occurs. That is the job of the observer. The observer is there to execute some code whenever we receive a new value or also an error or if the observable reports that it is done. Therefore, the observer is the part doing that and we need to connect it to the observable. We do that through a subscription. Subscription basically means with one method, the subscribe method, we tell an observable, our wrapper around that stream of values, that someone is caring about these values, that someone is listening to them, the observer. The observer, on the other hand, implements up to three methods. You can implement none of these, but then it's not that useful of an observer, or just some of these, whatever you need. The next method will be called by the observable whenever a new value is emitted, so whenever we receive a new value. The error method it will be called whenever the observable throws an error. And the complete method will be called whenever the observable is done. So whenever we know that no more values will be emitted in the future. Side note, some observables will of course never finish. If you wrap it around a click listener on a button, you don't know when this will finish, right? The user could always click the button. But how does the observable know that it should call next error and complete? Well, that is kind of the contract the two, observable and observer, sign through the subscription. The observable knows that it could fire a next, an error or a complete method on an observer. And the observer on the other hand knows that the observable will only fire one of these three methods. So you can easily implement them on the observer and react whenever they are fired. So it is this invocation of these methods which allows us to communicate and to handle our data. But depicting it like this is not the best way. Instead, what you commonly see is a depiction as a stream. As I mentioned, an observable in the end just is a wrapper around a stream of values. And we can have one value, which instantly occurs to have a synchronous data stream, or then it's not a stream, I guess, or we have multiple values. Whatever the case may be, we have our observer with the three methods I mentioned, where we can handle any values and we can handle one or multiple values. At the end, we might have an endpoint when the observable is done. And as I mentioned before, that might never occur. Some observables are never done. If we do complete the observable though, so if we have some data source which eventually finishes, then we can call end and we will execute complete if the observer provides it on the observer object. We also might have a stream which does not only emit values, but which also throws an error at some point of time. Think about a stream, or an observable I should say, wrapping an HTTP request. We know that we will eventually get back a response, but that response could be an error, either a timeout or maybe a server-side error. In this case, the observable would throw the error and we could handle it in the error function of the observer. Now, seeing that on slides is nice, but how do we actually use these concepts? Where can we see this concept in code? Well, let's take a look. I'm on JS Fiddle here, and I simply chose JS Fiddle because I kind of like the way it looks and how we can work with it. And what I'm doing is I'm importing the RxJS package from their CDN, which you can find on the official documentation on install it at the very bottom. And then I added a button which I can click. I listen to any clicks on the button with my observable here. So I get an access to the button here and then I simply wrap the button click and I create a new observable with the from event helper method. And as a side note, if you visit the official documentation at reactivex.io and then you click on observable here, you see there are a lot of methods you can use to create a new observable. And a lot of these methods are actually nice methods to conveniently create observables which do something specific, like 
Here, wrapping an event, Avarice would emit a new value every x seconds. Later in this video, we'll also see how we can create an observable from scratch, but back to this one first. I'm wrapping, or I'm creating an observable, wrapping this click event, and therefore, let's open the console, whenever I click the button here, we see that the value, the, the x position of my cursor is emitted, because that's what I'm getting here. So this is how this observable works. And what happens here behind the scenes is that this observable has an infinite stream of values, a new value is emitted whenever we click, that is how that observable is configured. And then in the subscribe method, we pass an observer. Now it may not look like this because all I pass is a method, but the subscribe method takes two possible arguments, either a list of functions, where the first function is the next function, the second argument would be the arrow function, and the third argument would be the complete function, or a single object which implements these methods. So I could also create my observer object here to take the, the full route, so to say, create it like that, a normal JavaScript object, and there I may have my next method, next function, we know that for that we will get a value, the value which was emitted, because next is only called once a new value is emitted. And there we could then log value client x in our case, or just the value, the full event. Then I can also implement an error, error function. Now that will never be called on a observable wrapping a click, because it can't error, basically. But we can still add the function. And we can also add a complete function, however, that also will never be called for this example, because when we're wrapping this button and we're listening to click events, this observable will never complete, because we can't tell if the user is going to click this button one more time. Still, I can log completed here. However, as I said, error and complete for this specific observable will never be called. Now that I created that observer, I could also simply pass that observer to my subscribe method. And now if I open up the console and clear it here, hit control enter to rebuild the code, and I click this, we get the full mouse event now, since I only logged the value and not cl value client x. But you see it works as before, simply emitting the value. That again is an observable, an infinite observable, an asynchronous one, because we can emit multiple values over time, and we use the from event helper method. Now let's see how we can create an observable from scratch, and how we can basically rebuild this exact same behavior with an observable being built from scratch. Now to build an observable from scratch, let's go to the official documentation and see which method might be helpful. And there are a lot of methods, but the create method here actually is the one I'm looking for. With create, we can build our own observable right from the start. So if you have a look at it, you see that create actually takes one argument, the observer kind of, and you will see how we build that in the next seconds. So we already got an observer, I will keep that. I will comment out this code here, however, or I can leave the subscribe function even. However, now I will use rx observable and now create. As I mentioned, create takes the observer to be precise. It takes a function which takes the observer as an argument. So we pass a function, an anonymous function to create, and this function takes an observer object. Now important, we're not passing our observer variable here because keep in mind that's an anonymous function. It was like if you were to declare a new one, so we simply name the argument this function will eventually get. And if we were to name it observer, we simply get naming conflicts with our variable. We don't pass the data to that function here. We define a new one, which will eventually receive one argument, our xjs will pass that argument for us, and this argument will be an observer, we know that from the documentation, so I will name it ops here. Now, inside of that function, we can call ops next to emit a value. So let's do that. Let's emit a value here. And if I now hit control enter to build this code and open the console log, you see a value was already emitted because of course we're not listening to any click right now. This code immediately gets executed. Why do we see a value? Because we subscribe to an observable, which takes a function where the function takes the observer, which we also pass to subscribe, 
And our XJS now passes our observer, which we passed to subscribe, to that function and executes that function. That is how you create an observable. In that function, we can call the next method on the observer, because remember, an observer knows, or the observable knows that an observer can have next, error, or complete. So these are the three methods we can call. And therefore, we see a value. If I were to call ops error, error here, like that, clear the console and hit control enter again, we see value, a value, and then error. And if I emit another data piece, a second value, after the error and hit control enter, you will see we don't see that because if an error occurs, the observable is finished. It won't call complete, which is why we don't see completed here. It doesn't execute that. It just executes error. But thereafter, no more values will be emitted because the observable is done. That's just how it behaves after an error. Now, if I call complete instead of error, complete without any arguments because we don't pass any to this method, you now see a value completed and you also don't see a second value because just like with error, the observable is done. It's just the case that it didn't fail, we didn't get an error, but it, well, completed regularly. Again, any other next calls thereafter won't give us an error, but also won't work. We don't get that value because the observable was finished before. Now that's all nice playing around with that, but it doesn't really feel like an observable, right? It's not asynchronous and that from event observable felt much more like it because there we actually wrapped something which was asynchronous and we could see that this stream of data made more sense. Here we immediately print some values in the end, execute some values. So where is that an observable? Remember that I told you that an observable doesn't have to be asynchronous. And here it isn't. We have a function and this gets executed when we subscribe to it. And in that function, we just execute some synchronous code. Therefore, our whole observable is not asynchronous. We can easily turn it into an asynchronous one though. We could simply add a timeout. So the normal set timeout method, let's set it to two seconds maybe. And here we of course have a function. So that's the default set timeout code. And if I now move ops complete into that, you will see that if I now hit control enter, we see a different output than before. Now we get a value and a second value before completed is printed after two seconds. And it makes sense because ops complete will not be called before two seconds are over. Therefore, this line is executed first, then set timeout is executed, but there nothing happens for the first two seconds. Then it moves on because JavaScript, of course, doesn't wait for a set timeout to finish. It never does. That's nothing observable specific. That is how JavaScript works. And therefore, it executes this line now. And then after two seconds, this line is executed. Now, all of a sudden, we have an asynchronous observable because now we have a data stream where we have two synchronous values being emitted immediately, but then one event happening after two seconds. And of course, I could also move that into this or in another timeout or something like that. I could also create an interval here. And if I do that, clear this, hit control enter, we see a value. And after two seconds, we see a second value and then it's completed. And now if I would move that after complete, of course, a second value would again never be printed because now after two seconds, it just is completed and it doesn't wait for, for anything else. So a second value is not printed. I hope this makes more sense. It might make even more sense if I now recreate that from event behavior. And this is actually pretty easy to do. I will comment out all my code I have in there in this observable create function right now. And instead I will add new code. We have a reference to our button, right? We do get access to it here. And now if I use that button, and set on click equal to a function which should eventually get executed. I can get my event in there and there I could call ops next event. Remember, I'm still in this function we passed to the create method. So we have access to that observer we eventually receive. And I'm in the function which I assigned to on click. So that will be executed whenever I do click. So now if I hit control enter and open my developer tools, if I click the button, now I'm again logging that mouse event. 
now I basically recreated the same behavior I had before with this from event observable, this one here. Now with my own observable built from scratch, but I hope this makes clear how observables work behind the scenes and how you can build them from scratch with the create method. Now there's one other very important point. If we subscribe to that observable like this and keep in mind this specific observable here is an infinite one because we never call complete here in this function. We don't call it because of course we always want to listen to more click events. If you have an observable which is never completed, that poses the danger of a memory leak. So you should definitely unsubscribe to any subscriptions which you don't need anymore. Imagine we have a more complex JavaScript app here, for example a single page application, and we navigate to some other place in our app. All of a sudden, we might not need this anymore, we might not need the subscription anymore. If we come back, we might even create a new one, but the old one still lives on in memory. That's a memory leak. So clean up any subscriptions you don't need anymore. And that's super easy to do. All you have to do is store that subscription in a variable, for example, name it subscription, or in a property of an object, wherever you set it up. So here I store the subscription, since I'm storing the result of the subscribe method, which returns the subscription. And therefore, I can unsubscribe. So I could add a set timeout method here that after five seconds maybe, I execute a function. Now this is outside of any observable, that's just in a normal JavaScript code. And there I use my subscription and I call the unsubscribe method. Now watch what happens. If I open the console, hit control enter, you can see I click here and it still prints the values, but after a little bit of a time, after five seconds to be precise, I can click this and no more values are printed because the subscription ended, we unsubscribed. And that is what you should do if you don't need a subscription anymore. And with that, I hope I could clear up some of the confusion. I hope I could make this concept of observables and subscriptions a bit more clearer. I hope you understand how you may build your own observable from scratch and what all these helper methods like from event and so on do behind the scenes. See you in other videos, hopefully. Bye.